I quit my job in the middle of a pandemic to do YouTube full time. Hey, it's your girl Asante helping you move consciously and creatively through life, so let's go. I put in my notice, I wrapped up my work, and my last day was two weeks ago. It's nerve wracking, it's risky, but I've been giving the best hours of my day to employers for a while now, and it's about time I bet on myself. We've had a visceral reminder of how precious life is and how you only get so much time. So if you have an opportunity to go after your dream, then you better chase that thing. Definitely weird just coming into an empty office and clearing out my stuff. Obviously didn't say any goodbyes in person, which sucks, but we did have a goodbye happy hour over Zoom and I set up some one-on-one -on -one calls with people to say goodbye. So, you know, trying to make it work and I have to come in to get my stuff anyway, but it's definitely not the same. For me, it was either take the leap now or forever wish I had, and we're not doing regrets. So we out here, okay? I've been on YouTube for eight years now. I started in 2013, well before YouTuber was a recognized profession. This was something that I was just doing as a way to express myself, document my life, share my life with my friends, and see if I could make some new friends on the internet, and lo and behold, I actually did. But over time, it's evolved from something that I was doing just for kicks to something that I'm really passionate about. It went from something I wanted to do just for me to something I want to do for my audience. I saw the potential of my videos to reach people make them think differently and actually create change. I met other young black women who said that the advice in my videos actually helped them to get into Harvard. I'd get emails from people who showed my allyship video in classrooms and at workplaces. I get comments saying that the encouragement I offered in a video about managing your mental health when you're slightly depressed is exactly what they needed to hear that day. And that's what I'm doing this for. That's what I'm after. And I'm excited to be able to put my full energy into this now. The job that I just left, which I've mentioned on this channel before, was at the Pointer Institute, which is a journalism training and strategy center. I was their editor of video strategy and the program manager for VidSpark, which is a program I got to build from the ground up where we worked with three local newsrooms on their videos for YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. At the end, we made a playbook of case studies and best practices for social media video, especially geared towards news organizations. So if you're interested in that, I'll link it in the description. And it was a great job. I felt well respected and appreciated. I liked my colleagues. I had an amazing manager. I had autonomy over my work. I was proud of it. And Pointer is a nonprofit, so it was a mission-driven organization. I was aligned with the mission and it was really hard to leave. And reflecting on my experience, I'm super grateful and I'm taking that time for gratitude right now and to thank people and to just realize how everything I've been through has led me to this point. Day jobs teach you a lot. They teach you how to show up regularly. They teach you how to be creative within work constraints, how to create good working relationships with other people, and how established business structures work. And as I rose in my career, I learned how to manage projects and people. I learned how to get people working together towards a common goal and how to get buy-in for my creative vision. The four day jobs that I've had have also allowed me to learn the basics of my industry. At IDEO, a design firm where I was a multimedia storyteller, I learned that there are no rules and that documentary video can be really creative. I learned how to edit in Adobe Premiere and I learned how things can work in an open work environment without strict hierarchies that really invest in its people and in its culture. At GBH, a public media station where I was a production assistant, I learned that you have to show up sharp and have your ish together. I may have been working in children's programming, but they were not playing games. I learned about navigating through busy schedules and staying on top of details. I learned about what goes into making children's programming, especially all the steps that go into animation, and I learned that production assistants are the glue that hold a production together. At PBS Digital Studios, where I served in multiple roles, I learned about the value of creative community and how to run your YouTube channel like a business. I learned about what goes into being a development executive, how to develop shows based on your editorial eye, even if you're not a content expert. And I learned what it really feels like to work collaboratively and feel like you belong in a space. At Pointer, I gained a greater respect for and knowledge of the process of creating quality journalism. I learned about what types of decisions editors and reporters make and how much of those decisions are subjective. And the importance of journalism ethics in maintaining trust with your audience and covering topics fairly. I also learned how to build and manage an entire program from start to finish. And in my manager, I gained an incredible mentor and friend. And like, I could not have known that I was going to get all of those things out of those jobs. These lessons are going to be incredible 
incredibly valuable for me to lean on going forward, as are the relationships and friends that I've made along the way. So if that's the phase you're in right now, get as much as you can out of it. But for me, there's something about getting to turn on the camera and say what's on my heart and speak directly to you and craft it in such a way that it informs and inspires and helps someone through their day. That feels like the truest expression of myself and my gifts and what I have to offer and that falls outside of another corporation's agenda or bottom line. I don't just want a seat at someone else's table. I want to build my own table. I want my own voice. I want to make my own opportunities. And I'm excited to put just as much time and energy and attention and focus and strategic thinking into my own work and to serving my own audience audience as I've put into serving employers for the past five years. And speaking of audience, I do want to mention that I have an audience survey linked in the description. I'm so excited about this. I love audience surveys and I would love for you to fill it out so I can learn more about who you are and what you might like to see from me. More on that at the end of the video. So you might be thinking to yourself, okay Asante, this is all well and good, but how are you going to make money? Like how are you doing this? Well, for this year, I'm able to do this for two reasons. First, I've been prioritizing saving money and not inflating my living expenses. I started saving as soon as I started earning. I wasn't always saving for this, but for the past couple years, I've known that I've wanted to go independent eventually, so I was building up a runway for that. The other side of that coin for keeping my coin has been keeping my expenses low. As you could tell from my bedroom office tour video, I'm in a small space. My desk is right here. <laughs> I've always filmed in my bedroom. I've always lived with at least one roommate, if not two or three. I also don't have a car. I don't have a lot of subscriptions. I don't have pets. I would love a dog, but I don't have pets. And I've done all of that intentionally so that I could save more and so that I wouldn't have as many expenses for my savings to cover. Even with my savings, I was wary of giving up a good income during a pandemic. So what has really pushed me over the edge and made me feel confident in doing this is receiving a grant from YouTube itself. I'm one of the inaugural recipients of the YouTube Black Voices Grant. It's a grant to support Black creators and artists on the platform. YouTube Black. I have total creative freedom over what I do with the grant and what I do with my content, so that's awesome. And for anyone interested in it, this is a multi-year effort and they did say they'd have applications for future rounds. But this is the first time they're doing it and with this first round there actually was no application. So I was not applying to things, I was planning on staying safe at my day job but they approached me with it and they were like, hey, we know your stuff, we like your stuff and we wanna support you. And I was like, I will take the support, okay? So I considered that a sign uh, that now was the time to jump. It was one of those all the stars aligning moments and I was like, I know what this is. Thank you, God, okay, I see you, all right. I hear it, I hear the call, I'm gonna go do that then. That, that's what you did, got it. Got it. And so I quit my job. I have about a year or so of runway to build up my audience, develop my craft, and figure out how to make this sustainable long term. And as far as making a sustainable living going forward, I want to have multiple income streams. So I'm open to a variety of opportunities. I'm open to brand partnerships if it feels like the right fit. But in my ideal scenario, I would love to be working primarily for my audience. The person you're working for is really the person who's paying you for the value that you provide. If the sponsors are the ones paying you, then you're really working for the sponsors. If the advertisers are the ones paying you, then you're working for the advertisers. So for me, working for my audience means that my audience sees the value in my videos and is willing to support them financially. And my main way of doing that is through Patreon. So if you wanna help my work to continue or if you would miss these videos if they were gone, then supporting on Patreon is the best way to help ensure that I'll be able to do this sustainably long-term and that's what I want. In the past, I've had to compromise on this channel because I have to make money from somewhere and so I've been working for employers and that's been taking up most of my time. And every now and then I would get a comment which I know comes from a good place and it would say something like, I love your videos but I wish you would post more often. And my question is, do you wish it enough to support the thing you find valuable? And this goes for any independent creator whose work you find valuable or really any independent media that you find valuable. If you want it to exist, then you should be at least willing to consider supporting it. The internet has normalized getting content for free, but the costs have to come from somewhere and it costs the creator. It costs time, money, energy, and it's work that 
the creator might not always be able to do without being compensated. You can't pay rent with likes, and creators shouldn't have to give up so much of their limited personal time and social time. To give you an idea, for me, I feel like a reasonable side hustle that doesn't dominate your schedule would take about 10 hours a week. My videos, the ones that are really good and the ones that I like making the most, take between 25 and 40 hours to produce. For my jogging video, for example, I spent 18 hours on the editing of the video alone, and that's not counting planning and filming the footage for the video, which took place over the course of a month. And that 25 to 40 hours of typical production time doesn't count things like running social accounts, making the content for Instagram and Twitter, making sure I'm reaching out to my community, answering emails, managing any brand deals that I do take on, making things exclusively for my Patreon patrons. I do have cool perks. Managing subscriptions that I need to make videos, ordering captions, looking at analytics, going to events and collaborating with people to make sure that I'm showing up for the YouTube community. All of that is what makes this a full-time job in and of itself. And we all need downtime, we all need relationship time, and we all need rest. So for now, I'm able to put 100% effort and attention into this. I'm gonna be uploading with consistency and quality and putting forth my best work for about a year. I definitely wanna earn my audience's trust and support, and I know that takes time. But that will be my test, and and if after my savings dry up, not many people find the work valuable, then that's a sign and I might be done. So this is my make or break moment. I'm gonna be doing everything in my power to make this work. I love talking to you directly. I love my independence. This is my dream. This feels like the truest expression of my calling right now and I'm determined, so. We'll see how this works out. In these first few weeks, I'm getting acclimated, organized, setting up my systems, updating my pages, getting the right accounts. It's like my new job orientation, except I'm also creating the workplace. And I have to set up my business like it's a full business, not just a side hustle anymore. So taxes and accounting and bookkeeping, P&Ls. Ah, we're figuring it out, y'all. We are figuring it out. I plan to build up my content production over time, not just here on YouTube, but also on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. I'm everywhere at Asante B. We're gonna see. And I want you to inform my content decisions. So again, I have an audience survey linked in the description. You can take it anonymously, but I would love to have a better idea of who's watching. As creators, it's easy to forget that the view numbers are actual people who are watching for various reasons and have various things going on in their lives. So I'd love to learn about you and get any suggestions you may have. The survey is mostly multiple choice and should take only about 10 minutes. And big shout out to my current Patreon patrons. They are the reason why I am here eight years later to begin with. When I felt like no one cared what little 22 year old me was doing, spending all of her free time talking to herself in her bedroom, wondering if anyone out there was really listening, they were and they cared enough to support they believed in my channel, they believed in its potential, and they're the motivation that I needed to keep going. I've been on Patreon for five years, since 2016, and my patrons are the ones that allow me to pay for captions and editing software, and that at a baseline have helped me to keep this channel going. Shout out to Melissa, who was one of my earliest $10 patrons who joined in 2016, and for a long time, Melissa paid for captions. So thank you, Melissa. Jamie, also a $10 patron, been rocking with me since 2016, always hyping me up, appreciating the content, Thank you, Jamie. Cole has been rocking with me for ages. Channing has come through on the Patreon. My fellow creator Garrett Robinson has come through on the Patreon and many others. Like these are my people and it makes such a real difference. So to my past patrons, my current patrons, and to anyone thinking about becoming a patron, I see you and I appreciate you. Thank you so much. That's, that's, that's the video. I'm gonna go organize my multi-platform editorial calendar. Remember to live spiritedly and think creatively and I will see you next time.